And lastly, I'll just throw a mitten hand on him there. I don't really care about making his hand look good for this demo. Okay, so then I can turn off my rough layer, and if my clean layer looks the way that I want it to look, I know it's not my best drawing that I've ever done. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but if my clean layer does look the way that I want it to look now, or the, the line work looks the way that I like it to look, then the next step um, is to go in there and do a bit of shading. Now, with these shading brushes that I've saved here, I've saved these ones with the draw behind option. Draw behind does get saved with the brush preset, so be aware of that. If you have brush, if you have the draw behind turned on when you save a brush preset, then it will save that in it. Speaking of which, you might wonder how do I actually save a brush preset? So the way to save a brush preset is you get all of your stuff here, or all of the tool properties and the color organized the way that you want it to be. Just to make it very obvious, I'm going to make this purple. Okay, and um, uh, so maybe I'd even make it semi-transparent purple just for the sake of argument. Maybe this is going to be a new rough brush. Um, and then I get, I can use the O shortcut, hold down O and then click and drag to get the size of the the maximum size to be the size that I want it to be. And you can hold down shift and O to drag the minimum size the way the size that you want it to be. Um, or you can just drag on the slider here which is slightly easier. And then once I've got that brush looking the way that I want it to look, so this is now my purple rough brush, then um, after the tool properties are all set up, you can go in there and you can click on Add Preset. And then you can just choose an icon from the list here. If you have saved some additional icons, you can browse to your own icon there as well. And then this layer option at the bottom says, you know, every time you use this brush, you create that layer if it doesn't exist. And if it does exist, you select that layer. In this case, for this brush, I don't want it to do anything, so I'm just going to select no layer. And with no layer on, it means when I select this brush preset, it just changes my tool properties and it doesn't affect the layer that I'm on. And I like that better because sometimes when I have a layer selected here, um, I forget about that and then I might be working on a layer and I click on that brush preset and it switches what layer I'm on. So I just like to leave that on no layer. And then I can call this my purple, purple rough. And now if I click OK, this is going to show up in the end of my list. So now I have an additional one. It will also show up in my brush properties view. I have an additional brush right here. So um, I don't want to make this too long of a tip this week, so I'll just do a couple extra things. So I was talking about doing some shading on this. So with the shading brush presets that I've got there, they have the draw behind option. And what the draw behind option does is when you draw on a panel, it will lay it, or you know, even though I'm drawing on the same layer here, I'm always on jack, I'm still on jack. Even though I'm still on jack, you know, it's popping that color behind all of the other lines that I've already drawn on this frame. So, um, for example, what I usually like to do, because I use the draw behind, is I do the darker colors first. Um, so, in this case, I probably don't need a really heavy shading anywhere, so I might just go straight to medium and then I can just knock in a bit of medium um, dark shadows there underneath his hairline like so. Sorry for a bit of a slowdown with the Camtasia there, maybe a little bit under his neck. And that's good enough for the medium level shadows and then I'll grab a light shadow and then I'll make this a little bit bigger and I can put some shading on his um, face there because I don't want the shadow to be too dark on the face. And as you can see, it's going to knock it behind everything. So because it knocks it behind, that's the reason that I like to go from dark to light. It's easier to draw it that way because the dark areas are always going to be closest to the lines. Um, so it's just easier to go from dark to light. And that's pretty good. I mean, I might want to add a little bit of additional neck shadow there. And um, maybe a little bit on the arm here. And then if that's good enough for my panel, then you know, this is pretty much the, what the storyboarding side of Storyboard Pro is all about. It's about laying out panels and, um, and uh, drawing. So in this case, let's say this panel looks good. I might want to also add a new panel. Now there's a difference between creating a panel and creating a scene. And when you create a panel, it means that you want to have more than one drawing to represent the current camera angle. So for example, um, you know, if and think of it of a, as a shot, if you're in live action, if you're, you know, if you're looking at a scene and your camera is either stationary or moving, but there's a couple of things happening in that scene. In this case, I've got my character here waving. 
but I might have him waving and then he might turn around and say something to the person behind him. And all of that will take place from the same camera angle. If that's the case, I'm going to add a panel. If instead he's going to turn around and talk to the person behind him, but the camera angle is going to change, then I'll create a scene. So a scene is every time the camera angle changes. So in this case, let's create a panel. And when you create a panel within the same scene, then what you can do is you can use your onion skin and you can turn on your onion skin to show um, the previous panel. And now I could do another drawing, so I could just go back and use my ref color again. I won't do a full drawing, but let's just say this guy is now going to turn in that direction and talk to the guy on the other side. And he can turn around and talk to him there. And then when I'm done getting the, um, the shape of it laid out correctly, I can turn off my onion skin. And then now if I play through these panels, and you can use the shortcuts A and F. A is to go to previous panel, and then F is to go to the next panel. So you can use those shortcuts to flip between your panels. So um, some storyboard artists do only drawings and uh, panels and stuff like that, and then they don't touch the animatic side of things at all. So if that's the case, what I showed you this week is going to be the majority of what you'll do in the software. And um, you may touch some camera moves, but that may be the extent of, of what you're doing. There are some other tricks and uh, tips and tricks about using the different drawing tools. 